Hello everybody and welcome to the Murray Music YouTube channel. Stick around to learn how I gave this MIDI guitar a paint job. So this video will be a complete tutorial that walks you through the entire process of painting a guitar. There are some great videos out there about how to paint a guitar, but most of them are longer videos and are split up over multiple parts. I want this to be a succinct video that demonstrates how anyone can get a great paint job on their guitar without fancy expensive equipment simply by being patient and paying attention to detail. I'm going to be using Duplicolor lacquer spray paint. You can pick this up at any auto parts store. I used a can of sandable primer, three cans of color, and two cans of clear top coat. For this guitar I used the color original GM light blue metallic. Other materials you're going to need are sandpaper in various grits, paper towels, some rubbing compound and wax, and some microfiber towels. Since we're going to be spraying the guitar, the space where you do it is very important. I rigged up this super simple paint booth with some duct tape and an old cardboard box, a 20 by 20 by one inch furnace filter, and a box fan. You can see the fan is blowing out away from the booth and this pulls all the overspray towards the filter and away from the guitar. The whole area is also lit up very well. In my case, I have a studio light pointing down from my garage rafters, but you could use work lights or anything else. But the more light you have, the easier it is going to be for you to see what you are doing. Since I built this guitar body and I'm painting it for the first time, I can't speak into the process of stripping and repainting a guitar. But if you get the guitar to a clean starting point, then this process should work for repainting as well. Now I sanded my guitar down with 320 grit sandpaper and used some regular spackle to fill in any gaps and dips in the guitar. Then I taped off the neck pocket with painter's tape to make sure the paint wouldn't affect the fit of the neck and hung up the guitar with some picture frame wire through the hole where one of the neck bolts goes. So once you've gathered all your materials and you have your space prepped, we can start painting. I started with a sandable primer and applied a light coat. Waited 10 minutes, then sprayed a second light coat. Waited another 10 minutes, and then sprayed a third thicker coat. If I could go back and do this again, I would have sprayed the primer thicker overall. I was worried about getting drips, so I didn't spray it thick enough, and it didn't fill in all of the cracks in the guitar, and my finish didn't come out perfect because of it. I think with the primer, it's better to spray it too thick almost, and then sand down any drips you do get, rather than not spray it thick enough. After that third coat, I left the guitar to dry for a day. The next day, I filled in some holes and scratches with spackle, then sanded the whole guitar with 600 grit sandpaper. I just dipped the paper in water and then sanded, making sure to rinse off the paper every so often to remove this sort of paste-like buildup from sanding the paint off. I then wiped down the guitar, and when it was clean and dry, I repeated the process, a light coat, wait 10 minutes, light coat, wait 10 minutes, and then a final third thicker coat and left the guitar to dry for the night. The next day it's the same thing, I'm gonna wet sand with 600 grit paper, wipe clean and let dry, light coat, wait 10 minutes, light coat, wait 10 minutes, heavier third coat and let it dry. Every time I'm spraying, I have the fan going on high to pull away any overspray, and I also have the garage door open so I have plenty of ventilation. I would also recommend wearing a mask of some kind to avoid inhaling any paint fumes. Next, I wet sanded with 600 grit paper, cleaned the guitar, and let it dry, and now it's time to start the color. Now the paint that I'm using is a sprayable lacquer. Lacquer paint works better if it is warm when you spray it. So every time I sprayed the color or clear coat paint from here on out, I kept the can of paint in a sink full of warm water. This heats up the paint and makes it spray out of the can smoother. So I pulled the can out of the warm water, sprayed the first light coat, put the can back in warm water. Waited 10 minutes, sprayed a second light coat, put the can back in warm water. Waited 10 minutes and then sprayed a third heavier coat and let the guitar dry overnight. Now, of course, I ended up not liking the first color that I sprayed on the guitar. So I got a different color and I started over, resprayed the guitar, now this set me back a day or so and probably made me have to spray more color coats in the end since the color I ended up choosing and liking was lighter than the original. So unless you change your mind like me, you shouldn't have to worry about this and you shouldn't have to sand every day from this point on. 
you can just add your first light coat, wait 10 minutes, second light coat, wait 10 minutes, and then a third heavier coat and let it dry overnight. Now I changed up my painting technique to get a better final coat. I used a scrap block of wood to hold the guitar up in the air but flat, with it only resting on the spring cavity in the back of the guitar. Then I could spray the back and carefully flip it over so the wood was in the pickup cavity, and then spray a generous coat on the sides and top. Keeping the top flat helps the paint settle and smooth out over the front of the guitar. I did the same three coat process, and after each coat, I hung the guitar back up to dry. Now with the color coat, and specifically the metallic colors, you want to get as thick of a coat as possible on the guitar. And because of that, you may get some drips, especially in more awkward places to reach. If this happens, it isn't the end of the world. You just need to wait a day for the paint to fully dry and then lightly sand the area with 600 grit paper to flatten out the drip. This might set you back a coat or two on the guitar, but then you just wipe clean and start again with a light coat, 10 minutes, light coat, 10 minutes, third heavier coat, and the drip should disappear. Now, once you are happy with the color coverage and look of the guitar, it's time to protect it with a clear coat. The process is the same for the clear coat. Make sure you keep the can in warm water, two light coats and a third thicker coat waiting 10 minutes in between. It is only important to get as thick a coat as possible when you're spraying the color onto the guitar. With the clear, it isn't as important to get a thick coat all at once. So it's better to edge on the side of caution and go with thinner coats and more of them to avoid getting drips. Now, since we'll be sanding and polishing this clear coat, it's important to get enough layers that you don't end up just sanding all the way through into the color coat. Now, I just continued the same three coat process for three days till I used up two cans of clear. Now it's time to switch gears to polishing. Hopefully at this point, your guitar is looking really good and it might be tempting to just stop here and be done but it is this next step that really makes it look like a factory finished guitar. Now I ended up waiting a couple of days after the last coat of paint went on to start this process. You have to make sure you wait until the paint is completely dry or else you'll end up with just a horrible gummy mess. I set up a station to work at and removed the painter's tape from my neck pocket. I started with a thousand grit sandpaper and wet sanded the whole guitar. Now it's really hard to show on camera, but what you should see is the guitar go from kind of shiny to an even dull texture. Keyword there being even. The guitar should go from looking like an orange peel, where there are dull bumps but shiny channels running around them, to an even dull appearance. After you are done with the thousand grit sanding, the guitar will look worse than when you started, but don't worry. We're now going to move up to 1500 grit paper and repeat the process leveling out the finish and bumps on a smaller scale. Now, once you are happy with the 1500 grit sanding, you can move up to 2000 grit, and some of that shine should be coming back into the finish of the guitar. When everything is coming out with an even texture with the 2000 grit paper, it's time to polish. Now, this process is basically just like waxing a tiny car. So we're gonna take a clean microfiber cloth and some rubbing compound and work it into the guitar making sure to really buff and work that compound in, not letting it dry on the surface. Next, I used my orbital sander on the lowest speed setting with a waxing pad on it. You could also use a dedicated car polisher waxer buffer, or you can rub the wax by hand. I then applied a good amount of wax on the guitar and rubbed it around first with the sander off just to even out the wax a little bit. And then I turned on the sander and buffed out that wax. It's important to keep moving during this process to work it in and make sure it doesn't dry on the surface. And then I did the same process by hand for all the edges and little corners and cracks and crannies in the guitar. And once that is all done, the guitar is ready to assemble. So if you worked on this guitar every day in a row, it would still take you two weeks to finish this paint job, which is horrible. I won't lie, it was an excruciatingly long two weeks but the end result is worth it. As you can see, this guitar looks great. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please ask those in the comments below and I would love to answer them. Otherwise, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. But most of all, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.